Hey everyone, Dave here, and right now I'm geeking out over Popstar. Never stop, never stopping. Dave's obsession. Dave's obsession of the moment. The Lonely Island hit the big screen this summer with Popstar. A spoof of ego-boosting musician documentaries like, um, that Justin Bieber one and, um, that Katy Perry one. Popstar tells the story of Andy Samberg as Connor For Real, a pop star who is part Bieber, part Kanye, part Beyonce, part Timberlake, part every other pop star of the past couple of decades, and all Samberg. I saw Popstar opening weekend and it immediately became one of my top two favorite Apatow produced spoofs of genres that tell the story of a musician's life that feature Tim Meadows in a supporting role. Okay, that sounds like faint praise, but I really like both of these movies a lot. Of course, there is yet another classic comedy that any mockumentary about a declining musician will immediately draw comparison to. These guys are 11. And yeah, Spinal Tap is an unassailable comedy classic that has stood the test of time. And it was parodying a type of music that its audience was more likely to genuinely enjoy, so the songs are also frequently appreciated unironically. And yeah, it's far too early to tell if Popstar will also become a comedy classic that stands the test of time like Spinal Tap, but Popstar does fill a void as a satire of the current state of pop music. Much like the most financially successful SNL spin-off movie of all time, this film is a snapshot of the era that made it, highlighting everything ridiculous about right now in pop. Maybe it won't become a timeless comedy classic, but it could easily become a classic time capsule, reminding generations to come, this is what pop stardom was like in the 2010s. And I would say there's nobody better suited to make that kind of movie than The Lonely Island. I've always had a strong appreciation for Lonely Island, not only because of how talented they are, but also what they represent in the world of friends making silly internet videos and then eventually making it big. And when you consider that Lazy Sunday was one of YouTube's first big viral hits that cemented it as not just a place to watch videos online, but THE place to watch videos online, as a guy who makes videos online, I owe quite a debt to them for shaping the very world I play in. Lonely Island. True pioneers. So that's some shit about us. But possibly the most important factor in their success as comedy musicians is their ability to simultaneously satirize and celebrate. To viciously mock the stupid aspects of pop music while genuinely enjoying the fun aspects. It shows when they get some of the biggest names in music to poke fun at themselves, and it shows in the movie. Not just in the cameos, but in their empathetic portrayal of pop stars. Not necessarily of pop stardom, but of the stars themselves. I live for this music, and it can't go away. As much as they're viciously mocking some of the trappings of pop culture, The Lonely Island shows no viciousness toward the people trapped in these lives. In fact, the only institution of pop culture they seem to really despise is TMZ, and even then they show some sympathy toward the people who find themselves stuck working there. I haven't talked to my mom in three years. I moved out here, I thought I could get like a commercial agent. I just wanted to be a longboard model. I never graduated high school. In Andy Samberg's first big appearance on SNL, he played up sort of a frat douche bro persona, and as a result, some people thought that was all he brought to the table. Hey, how's it going? I'm Jack Nicholson. What's up? <laughs> but it didn't take long for him to make it very clear that he was more than that. That he was an intelligent, creative, and empathetic performer, which he continues to prove weekly now on one of the best network comedies on TV. Connor is an idiot and kind of a douchebag, but Sandberg portrays him empathetically and at the height of his intelligence. And despite all the silliness, the character is allowed to show legitimate growth. Even when his problems are the very definition of first world and his coping mechanisms are ludicrous, the loneliness Connor feels is real. And of course, the only cure is reconciling with the guys who were there for him in the beginning no longer putting the trappings of stardom above their friendship, resulting in one of the most narratively powerful character moments to ever double as a turning something into a bomb gag. I do have to wonder how much of this story is the Lonely Island living out a worst case scenario, an exercise in there but for the grace of God. Like Connor, Samberg shot to stardom ahead of his crewmates, but unlike Connor, he never abandoned them in the process. This is all pure speculation on my part, but I can't help but wonder if part of the reason the Lonely Island found it so easy to find the humanity in these caricatures is because they're seeing a path that they too might have gone down had they let pettiness get in the way. But I can't claim that with certainty, I'm just reading my own thoughts into the film. 
What I can claim with certainty is the movie is really, really funny. The film straddles the line between stupid and smart in that kind of way I just love. And in addition to Andy, Yorma, and Akiva, the cast features a murderer's row of comedic talent in many roles of many sizes. If the film has a weakness, it's that there's so many great concepts thrown about that some end up underdeveloped in the final cut. That's right, my biggest complaint about this movie is I wish there was more of it. The deleted scenes flesh some of these ideas out, giving payoffs to running gags that are set up in the film, and giving Joan Cusack in particular a lot more to do. Because so much of Lonely Island's work is about heightening the established tropes of pop music to ridiculous places, there's little difference between Lonely Island being funny and Connor trying to be serious. Even if they hadn't made this movie, they could release the entire contents of the soundtrack as a new Lonely Island album, and nobody would question it. But together, the film and the soundtrack make a complete experience, and I strongly recommend both. So check them out if you haven't already, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.